You said you were mainly inspired by the movie Metropolis. Why this movie and why now? Um, well, we started to, to, to talking about writing another album. We kind of had a long <clears throat> discussion of what we were, I mean, if we're going to do another album, in, in what way, from which perspective we, do we want to move? And we, we had a, like a, a, a very long uh, email conversation. I mean, we live in different cities now, so there's a lot of emailing going around about where we had been, where we were at the time, and where we should move our sound. And um, I mean, for the last two albums, at that point, we had been in a very rural environment, both somewhere along the highway and the Eternal Kingdom has some kind of a earth-like tone to it and very much inspired by the north of Sweden, uh, where, we, where we are. <clears throat> Sorry, where, where we are from. Uh, so we said, okay, next album, we need to take this uh, into the city, into the future. Uh, and we started to, to uh, email ideas back and forth and we kind of- Also very, pictures. Yeah, uh, exactly. And we, we, we kind of, uh, after a while, we understood that like German expressionism and, and, and like the future is to the 1920s, is, that's the way we want to go. Because I, I mean, if you go, want to go into the future, it's very, very easy to, to uh, to, uh, uh, or if, if you want to take the easy way, you can just a lot of uh, very digital keyboards and all that. But that's not what we want to do. We want to take kind of a, the the old future, the more yeah. And I think I mean, and Metropolis for me is that's that's one of the, of, of the masterpieces of, 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 of the cinema uh, of all time. Where did you got the inspiration for the lyrics? I kind of, I mean, the last couple of years I've, I've been, I would say the last six or seven, eight years, I've been very much involved and, and thought a lot about uh, theology and, and the kind of hindrance that it is for, uh, for, um, humanity to live up to, to our potential. And I, I thought that, I mean, since the last album, Eternal Kingdom, was based on a lie, I would try to focus as much as possible on, on, on the, the, the search for truth. Uh, so I would say a lot, of the, a lot of the lyrics are basically my just about lack of logical, rational thinking, or just emotionally my anger towards a world that is basically going up in flames because uh, we have a lot of mutual exclusive uh, ideas of, of, of how, how the world world is um, is um, you know how the views of the world um, from a uh, theologic perspective so I mean there, there's a lot of anger and and, 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 and the disappointment in the lyrics but I mean I, I felt like I need at least to have one some kind of uh, something written that is not written from anger or hatred so I, 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 I finished off with in all which is basically just my my fascination of of, of, of the real wonders of the world just look up the night sky and, and the, the the problem of living in north of Sweden or problem depends on how you look at it there's a lot of darkness during the winter so mm -hmm. but just looking up when it's pitch black you see all the stars and you see the the northern lights and all that and the fascination for like the 
the, the real wonders of the world, the universe, and, and, and all the mysteries that, that it holds. So, yeah. The song Passing Through gave me the chill the first time I heard it. I really want to ask you about the words time passing me by. Is it related somehow to the five years of silence? Uh, I, I, I wish I could answer that question, but that's the only lyric that's been written by Frederick. Uh, but I can tell you this, <clears throat> that that's a tune that Frederick wrote. Mm, all right. Yeah. Um, I will ask him. Yeah, you, I think you have to. Uh, what I can say is that I heard a demo that he recorded, and the thing is, Frederick is a very mo modest guy, and uh, he, he just showed me a, a, piece, a piece of what I'm working on right now, uh, and I, I listened to it, and you, you said it gave you the chills, and I can tell you, it, it, it gave me goosebumps just listening to, to it first. So, uh, like, while we were, we were writing the music, I had that song in the background, and I, like, I, I felt like, uh, I, I don't want to push anything for Freddie. Like, when he's done, it's, it's done. So, but I, I, the thing, the songs that I wrote, I wrote that with his song in mind. And, like, we were getting closer and closer to the deadline. And, and I was like, eh, how, how's the song going? At? Uh, yeah, uh, I have to have time. I need to blah, blah, blah. And um, I, st I started pushing, like, yeah, you need to get this song song done. So, uh, and I'm, I think Freddie has to speak for himself. I, I, let's just say that I've, I've never in my life heard a song that has been recorded with such a, uh, um, like, I don't know, tension or pre presence. And I think that, I, I'm not sure, I mean, again, I, I do not want to speak for Frederick, but he, uh, it, the lyric and the way it's, it's sung, it's one of the most uh, honest, um, I mean, moments, the moments I've felt in the, in the studio ever, and uh, also I we we work together with the arrangements, especially with them, you know, all that. I'm, I'm really happy how it came out. This is uh, one of my favorite songs. Now, something that Cult of Luna known for is the attitude of writing music as concept. Is the order of your albums also written in a conceptual way? I mean, did you plan it this way that after the green countryside we will move to the gray city? Yeah. Yes, I was a yes question. <laughs> All right. Consider you inspired by pictures uh, for this album and also you working as a casting director for movies, doesn't make you want to add some video art in Cult of Luna shows? No, not at the moment. I, I mean, I wouldn't say never, but one thing I can say is that, I, uh, I mean, I, I'm not Cult of Luna, so, but in a discussion within the band, I would never support having a, a full visual background all the time because I, when I see bands that have it, it's, it takes the focus from the band, honestly. It's like, I, I, no offense to many bands that I like, <laughs> but and the friends of mine that play in bands that use a lot of visuals, but it's just a distraction for me. And I think that, um, for me, it must add something to the music. I mean, I don't know how many bands I've seen throughout Europe that have had visuals that's been power lines, you know, like, oh, it, it's just boring. It, it's simply boring. It's not, it doesn't add anything to the live experience. We try to work as much as possible with lights, 
and use light as a piece of mood setter. <clears throat> Uh, but I mean, I would never say never, but I, I must at least feel like it's going to, going to add, add something and not, distract, and not distract from from us. Usually, you write the lyrics first and then compose the music or music first? I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm trying to, this time I thought, okay, come on. But, I mean, because if you think music is hard to write, lyrics is, is impossible. So uh, um, I thought, okay, this time I'm going to start writing early so I don't end up with you know, having to rush things. But um, uh, so most of the time I write, um, I write with, uh, with the music already written. But that doesn't really matter, though, because when I... I write, I write the lyrics in, I need to find the rhythm in, within the, like the, the, the words and the sentences. So I'm, I'm not really that bothered about if it's, if it's grammatically okay or not. It just, I'm just trying to find some kind of rhythm within the boundaries of the language. And, um, uh, and then I try to match it with the song it is not always that it works so I have to add something or take away and one thing that's very interesting with the new songs that we we've done now is that I, for the first time in my life I wrote something in Swedish so we'll see how it worked out <laughs> and it was actually one of the, it was one of the most uh, um, refreshing things I've done for many, many years. I, usually I, I struggle with the lyrics. Like, oh, it takes weeks, months to get them done. I wrote this in, in, in a half an hour or something like that. And, yeah, and then me and Freddie kind of worked herself around. He had, he had to work a bit with it too. So, um, but it, that, that was very refreshing and interesting. Uh, Why did you call the album Vertical? Uh, what constitutes a city? It's, I mean, it's human presence. And um, we try, I mean, the idea of having a, a city as inspiration uh, kind of flow, flow through every aspect of the, the making of the album. From um, just writing riffs, or playing, I mean, repetition, uh, like, like the industry, you know, um, monotone idea, and we're talking about shapes and forms. One thing that you, as far as I know, don't find in in nature is like vertical lines. In many sense, I think that that makes it made a lot of sense um, to name the album Vertical because it's it's about human presence. It's about, and also for me, it. Um, it's, for me personally, and when it comes to writing lyrics, trying to always, I mean, strive vertically to, to kind of enlighten yourself with knowledge and, and ideas, mm -hmm. constantly striving. And I think that we're going, uh, this, my, uh, when it comes to my uh, inspiration of, of what I want to do in the future is continue up that ladder, uh, the vertical ladder. And, and uh, aim even even further. And I thought it's because of the you know vertical buildings. Yeah, uh, and also, the, I mean that's the idea. It's vertical lines. It's human. So yeah, the, the, it, it have a lot of meaning for me. After five years, is it difficult to hit the road again? Um. Honestly, no. Um, I mean, play, I don't know how many shows we have done through the years, um, but it's like riding a bike, I think. But a, a, every tour, you need three or four shows to like getting get into the vibe. 
Uh, but, but that's how it always has been and it always will be. And especially when it comes to playing new songs. Mm. But no, it, it was very easy. And speaking of a daily job, uh, you're in a band that does almost everything by yourself. You're going out for tours, having a family life, and keep a regular job. How you manage to do everything? I, <laughs> that's just ha- half of what, what I do. I do more. But I know I mean, it, 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 it's, um, it's a, I call myself a, a, myself a life judge. So I, I, I like I have sometimes I have too many balls in there um, some in some way I, I, I well we just manage I mean we have a lot of kids in the band uh, but it, it's hard to be away from them no doubt about that um, and um, it's just I mean it's just about focus if you have a lot of things to do you, you just make lists and then you like you kind of uh, uh, do them one by one and but it's hard especially like writing music because that's something that You cannot really like put a schedule like uh, well I do actually okay between between eight and nine maybe I can sit down by the guitar but it's yeah but but it's not like it's um, it's not uh, I mean rips and ideas doesn't come on schedule it's something that you, you know it is like I, I see that so for me it's it, Riffs and ideas are constantly like just passing through my my consciousness and sometimes I'm, I'm just by a guitar and can record it and that's how it stays uh, so I mean so that I mean writing music is really hard and I don't think people really understand how exactly how hard yeah so uh, that's why it took you five years making the album you needed the time for the inspiration yeah um, I mean I We actually just entered, we just entered the studio a couple of weeks ago and and, and finished the recording of, of a couple of more songs that we had from the um, vertical session so we're gonna release uh, uh, three more songs later. Wow. yeah great so yeah when <laughs> I, I, I don't know I don't, I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about that but anyhow <laughs> I want to move to some question about the gear and the recording of the album. I'm not going to be able to answer, but go ahead. Can you say a few words about the gear you used for Vertical? I mean, any new amps, special effects? Well, well <laughs> I mean, we use a whole lot of, of different amps and I, I'm not really sure I remember. <laughs> I mean we we use a lot of, of uh, orange I mean su- sun is an uh, we, uh, we use sun or uh, sun model T orange different orange amps 80 30 uh, old martial amps trainer trainer mark three and oh uh, we have such a guitar park it was so many it was almost one and a half years ago one year ago. So I hardly remember which of the guitars I used. Um, but we, I mean, we used a uh, couple of different tunings uh, on these albums. Uh, yeah, one of the, new, the songs you, that we're going to release now are three guitars with three different tunings. Very, very interesting thing. <laughs> uh, and when it comes to, when it came to effects and, and uh, I mean, I've talked about uh, Vertical, it's a harsh, environment it's it's um, so there's a lot of, of, of trying to find sounds that kind of you know were annoying almost hurt your ears um, so we had a, a, a friend of ours Mons Lundberg who is a producer that we took him for three days to help us with the guitar playing and trying to find out different ways uh, to work around the fe- effects and Uh, and also Christian Carlson, which has been a stand-in for Anders on the keyboards, but he's an amazing producer, so um, he, um, 
he's helped us with uh, finding new pedal boards and, right. and all that. Yes, yeah, some of them I don't even remember. The right. names. <laughs> Okay, but uh, we saw some crazy silver guitars at the metal town we just came from. What is this? Uh, handmade? Custom, maybe? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're called... Uh, it's actually called Electric Guitar Company. They're made out of from, from a guy in, in Florida, uh, and he custom made them. Uh, so, yeah, that's... And, 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 and that's the, the kind of guitars... I made my, my neck longer. I think it's 27 inches, something like that. It's not a baritone, but it's it's easier for me to play that down-tuned uh, songs. All right, those uh, guitars also uh, recorded in the album? Uh, actually, no. Uh, oh. we, we got them after, and but they, they sound amazing, so I can't wait to use them on the album. I'm probably going to get myself couple more of them too. Yeah. Well, um, you did most of the vocals in this album, right? Yes. You do any warm-up before stage and recording? No. Uh, I kind of have, I think I have the worst technique ever. I, I, I need to fuck this woman out of New York. I'm a really good vocal coach. Uh, no. Uh, I, I'm pretty much. I need I need three days to to trash my my vocal cords in the way that it sounds good. Yeah, the, I have I have no technique. I, I I really suck at this. I really need somebody's help. And and uh, but it works so far. <laughs> I haven't destroyed. It yet. All right. Yeah, because uh, you know, if uh, how do you manage to keep your voice to function during the intensity of a tour? It is, you know, you're shouting a lot. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's hard. There's no easy answer. It's just I'm just lucky every show that I manage not to suck. So, <laughs> so that's it. All right. Are you kind of uh, catching the moment and uh, improvising while recording, or are you getting into this process very accurate, know exactly what you're gonna do and how it will sound in the end? I would love to say that we're improvising, but we actually not. We're very, very, very aware. Of, I mean, sometimes things. And uh, I mean, you, you work in the studio, of course, and, 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 and you get ideas in the studio, but we go in we go in with a pretty good idea of what we wanted to do. I mean, I think we have, before we started writing Eternal Kingdom, we tried, the first try we did on Eternal Kingdom ended up in a total, total mess because we tried to do this uh, jam-based uh, writing sessions. And it was horrible, and it sounded shit. So we pretty much canceled everything. I remember we had a meeting like, okay, let's just, this isn't working. So, um, no, we have very, very a good idea of what we wanted to do. And, and for me, it's very important that the person that comes up with the idea need, need to have, I mean, not as a dictator, but that the person need to, to get their vision out first. To be able to lead the other the others uh, when writing, and then you can start get pitching ideas. Oh, maybe we could do this instead. And I think that works a whole lot better than if everybody's going to contribute contribute uh, to something that just ends up sounding like some horrible mess, which it did. So, and I think Eternal Kingdom ended up very good compared to what it could have been. And out of that perspective, people need to know who's. Um, who's doing what, and all right, they, they are, are are aware of how the song is going to progress. I mean, I I've had a, a lot of since I live in Stockholm now. I, I can I can write stuff on my computer now that I record like a sketch. Look, just listen to this. It's not going to sound like it, and I don't want to limit anyone. Like, except for example, we have one of the best drummers in the world playing. Uh, he's not been able to play that much live with us, but Thomas is one of the world's best drummers, without a doubt. And when I like program the drums on my computer, like, okay, Thomas, listen to this and then trash it. The only thing I wanted you to listen to is the intensity of how we move the different parts. And then you do your thing and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. 
So I just like somebody that have an idea and can lead the others. That, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've been in the Sweden forests. We've been uh, somewhere along the highway. We also visit now the city. What next? Any new project on the way? I think... Oh, I, I think... Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm starting to get ideas. Oh. Um, I just... I mean, who knows when the next time is going to be out. I, I think that... I'm, I'm writing constantly and something good needs to come out uh, before. <laughs> um, but I have a good idea. I think we kind of touched that earlier when we talked about vertical and aspiration upwards. All right. Upwards to the sky. We'll see. <laughs> cool. Well, now you got my curiosity, but <laughs> let's move on. Well, any tip for our local bands, how to keep it real and still get out there? I mean, that's a very hard question. I get that a, a lot. I mean, th yeah, the, the, the idea, I just think that play as much as possible. I mean, honestly, I, I remember I, when I did, I remember, yeah, I remember very clearly. It's the tours I'm, I remember the most, uh, when we did, did um, tour Europe with my old kind of punk, punkish band back in 99, 2000, when we played squats, we played every venue we could. We played in front of four people in Madrid, I remember, more people on stage than, than in the audience. And that's, I mean, that's how you learn. That's how you become better. That's how you become professional. Uh, forget about the, the myth of like drugs, rock and roll. I mean, take it seriously. I, I, I kind of despise that, that myth and that kind of cliche. Um, and don't try to be another band. That, that, that's, I mean, that's very important. I think, and, and, be, and be very open to influences from different, from, from different um, types of music. I mean, people would be very surprised when they hear the references we're talking about in in the rehearsal room when we write, I mean, if I mean, there's everybody steals and borrows. That's but if you do that from different kinds of music and take it through the factor of the different members and the the band, it becomes something completely different. That's, that's one of the most important thing. I mean, listen to, if you play one kind of music, listen to every kind than the one you're playing. And you're going to end up with something original. And with that, with originality, I'm not saying that that equals good, because there are a lot of original sucky bands out there. But I mean, you need to start somewhere. But I mean, if you want to play heavy metal for, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, um, Staying close to the roots and not, you know, going too much out of the boundaries of what is considered heavy metal. I'm just saying, I think you, for me, it's important to see that bands have some kind of original touch to it. That that's the balance that I would kind of, and it's, it's one thing that for me it's very important. And and why I like bands that, <laughs> I mean, bands that do it conceptually, that, that have an overviewing um, idea of like creating fantasy, a new world, uh, and wanting to tell stories. That's, that, that are the bands that I um, kind of... But that's uh, kind of the difference between art and, uh, you know, copycat, I guess. All right, and uh, last question, but uh, not less important. Can we dare and ask, Israel, any plans? Honestly, no, no we don't have, I mean, I, I, I would love to, 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 to play in Israel. I haven't, haven't, haven't been there. Um, I, I'm the last one in my family that <laughs> hasn't been to, 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 to Israel. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not that, aware of, of the scene in Israel at all. I'm, 
I, I remember there was one band that was an Eric what, back when we signed to them called oh Rev, some kind of a Rebus cast or something like that. I can't remember I think it was an Israeli band uh, I was cased yes maybe, right yeah uh, but I'm not aware of if there's a big scene in Israel well we are a small country so you clearly that compared to other countries everything here is smaller and also and also the fact that this genre as it is small compared to the big metal scene you know so um, but I can say this that the ones who are familiar with bands like Cal of Luna really love them and really want to see you guys live and also I can say that you know the amount of people we, we saw in the metal town in Sweden is easily the number of people I think will come to your performance here in Israel when and if one day but uh, yeah it is getting bigger here all the time and that's actually the main reason for this interview you know to take it one step further and to promote the scene in Israel and, and that's one beautiful thing about playing like in small places small uh, Like small countries and, and, and small cities is that <clears throat> people show up when something happening and I mean we did we did uh, two shows in Romania uh, in the, the last tour and I mean Romania it's another country where people have who bad have actually started to to go and, but it's very I mean it took one day to go to Bucharest I mean one day of just driving the bus uh, but that was one of the best shows in the tour people are in interesting interested in seeing what's happening and I, I mean Israel uh, I can't even but also it's very remote remote you need to like fly in I mean okay look in the best case scenario I would like to do the Middle East I would, would love to play Riyadh but that's not gonna happen right <laughs> uh, and I mean that's one of the reason why I I love touring I love seeing different different places but I mean Let's hope that we're gonna be able to do a full Middle Eastern tour sometime. Play Baghdad, play Tehran. Yeah, why Tehran. not? But uh, you know, also Meshuggah's been here and, uh, and many people came to see them and many other bands have been here and uh, the Israeli audience is amazing. You might be very surprised, you know? Maybe, I mean, Meshuggah is from the same city that we are from in North Korea, so maybe it's It's kind of a good idea for for uh, Umeo bands to come to. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> do this tour, especially for us. Yeah, and I, I mean, I would love to go there. I, I'm, like, my dad has been to Haifa a couple of times, and I've seen the pictures. So, so uh, I don't know. Where are you situated? Are you sitting in Tel Aviv? Or... Yeah, near Tel Aviv. Uh, everything is very close here, you know. City is about... To, 20 minutes from each other not like in Sweden uh, so uh, everything is like one big city uh, and uh, so you know Tel Aviv it is oh yeah well, oh, but, I mean hopefully we, we um, well, the, the, the problem with this band is that we are a lot of people so, so we are very expensive to book and that is not I mean <laughs> uh, we are not earning anything of, of, of this band uh I mean selling t-shirts yes that's that uh, that's we are enough so we can pay our bills but um, doing one-off shows just flying in for doing a festival so we don't earn anything but we're quite expensive since we are like with uh, we're 10 people on now so with a lot of equipment I believe uh, two years from now uh, things will be different I'm sure you will you know manage to do it like that I have no doubt um, so you know we have to wait because to get to Sweden it's a little bit uh, you know difficult for us all the time <laughs> it's exactly as difficult to get to Israel I guess <laughs> yeah but you know you are the band uh, you need touring <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually, some, sometimes being in a band helps. Like when you go to, when you search or when you, when you apply for Visa at the American Embassy. Like I remember the first time we were sitting, I was sitting in like in a line and you saw all these poor Indian fellows were standing in the, like in the cubicle and they were sitting for hours and hours and hours. 
And finally, it was my turn. Oh, you're going to tour America. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, put your left finger there, right finger there, bam, boom, four minutes. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> One of the benefits, you know, can tour the world. We can always, uh, you know, uh, give you a canoe or something, try to pedal here. <laughs> When I was 12, I walked out of a canoe, promising myself never step foot in one. I haven't. <laughs> it was 22 years ago, so you're not going to get me in a canoe, I promise you that. <laughs> That's a different uh, between us. I never had a canoe. No, I'm, I'm kidding. So <laughs> thank you, though, very much uh, for your time. We will be waiting for you anxiously. Uh, hopefully one day you'll get here, and I'm sure you will. And uh, we will be continue to be updated. So... Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And good, good luck with everything. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Yes. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>